Hello everyone and welcome back to Taito Ecology and today I am actually super nervous about our wolves. So as you guys know last week we decided to try out a new experiment where we would have our wolf prairie where we added in the wolves because people had been begging and begging and begging for so long to add in the wolves. So I put wolves in at the Great Plains biome and then I made the wolf mountains which put wolves in at the Himalayan forest biome and I'm kind of nervous about how they have done. So today I thought instead of jumping around to bamboo grove or checking in on the other biomes which we will check back in on soon i wanted to go see how the wolf prairie was doing because i'm a little bit worried about them and wolf mountains so we'll spend half the day with wolf prairie trying to spruce it up seeing if anyone has survived and we'll spend half the day with wolf mountains and then later in the week we will bounce back over to bamboo grove and see how they have done with their fox situation and we'll check in on everybody else because i am poor i need my taito coins and we have all of these beautiful biomes are you only allowed six biomes <gasps> You're only allowed six biomes. Oh my gosh, I didn't know that. All right, you guys ready for this? We're gonna go to Wolf Prairie first. Oh, apparently no time has passed. Are you kidding me? Has it really been no time? Weekly income. Let's see, a group of mushrooms has died. A group of mule deer has a low population. A group of jackrabbits has a low population. But no time passed? Did I not have... <gasps> I had to just set to one week, only one week, what? I was taking the coward's way out. I didn't know that. I didn't know we had it set so low. So let's see what's going on over here. Looks like our wolf population is doing okay. So, oh, let's get to work, let's get to work. The faster we can start moving around and putting things down, the better. So what do we need to feed our jackrabbits? Where are they headed? Let's double check. Herbivores, they eat nearly any type of plant matter from leaves to roots to bark. These animals eat almost constantly. 15 jackrabbits can eat as much as a large cow in one day. Oh my goodness, and speaking of large cows, I wonder if it would be helpful to our communities of animals. Let's put some milk vetch down. I wonder if it would be helpful to get um, the bison in here at some point in the future. But I didn't know I, I didn't have it passed so far. Oh, I thought I thought we had like time passing quicker. But in a way, I guess it's a good thing. Let's put some Heath Aster down. And then I really want to see, is it switchgrass? Yeah, I really want to see some switchgrass patches start showing up. But that's okay. So we'll go ahead and we'll spend half the day here with our wolves. And that'll actually give us more time to put food down for our little tiny herbivores. And to also watch the wolves just as they, they roam around the place and see how they do. Hi, buddies. A lot of you guys were super excited about trying to come up with names for the wolves and all sorts of fun like pack names. Oh man, where's he gonna go? It doesn't look like our antelope are that frantically concerned about the predators. Uh oh, I see a jackrabbit holding still. Oh, there goes a mule deer. Oh, 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 and there we are. It's the cycle of life right here, my friends. Oh, that was, that was pretty quick. Oh, look at you, big yawn, big yawn. All right, so the wolves seem to be adjusting. How quick are they going through that population? Let's check, how quick are they going through this population of jackrabbits? So we still have 10 jackrabbits left, and I think we're gonna have to add in more jackrabbits. How about over here? 10 jackrabbits left over here. What about over here? Nine jackrabbits. Oh wow, we have a lot of jackrabbits, eight jackrabbits. Mmm, I wonder what's going to win out first. The the fact that we need plenty of uh, jackrabbits to feed the wolves or the fact that the jackrabbits need plenty of food to survive. Hmm, I'm not sure. All right, where's where are these wolves going? This is really fascinating to be able to watch so many of them. All right, what's going on here? Did you just eat a leaf? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> you just ate a jackrabbit that was hiding under there. This is so cool. I didn't know the jackrabbits would like hide under the sumac bush. That's so cool. Not for him, like he's dead now, but it is pretty cool to see. All right, so I think I wanna add in a lot of heath aster. Um, and it looks like the, the sumac bushes recover pretty quickly from having been nibbled on. So that's good to know. And then we'll put down a lot of switch grass on the ground over here. And we don't really have that many Taito coins left because I spent so much trying to get the wolves established in the last two zones. But we will spend some time. We'll still spend a little bit more time with them here. Try to help everybody get set up. There we go. And what do you think, Mr. Wolf? You're getting a little hungry. We'll have to see how that's going to affect our population. It doesn't seem like they're going for that many of the antelope just yet. It seems like they're really focusing on 
they're really focusing on like the smaller guys, like the jackrabbits. So I wonder if it would be safe. I think I'm going to try adding in like a deer mouse population. Now in the past, we've had lots of issues with deer mice, but let's put down like two little deer mice population. I wonder, populations, I wonder if that's going to be okay. Like if they're going to be able to help feed our wolves. It wouldn't be a lot of food if you're talking about like the amount of mass that the wolves can eat, but it might be something. So we'll go ahead and throw that in there. Let's see. And then, ooh, an eastern cottonwood. No, we're going to keep this mostly, like that would provide a lot of leaves, which is why I was looking at it. But we were thinking about, oh, there goes another jackrabbit. Oh gosh. They really need to have babies a little bit faster if they want to, if they want to survive. All right, let's try some prairie blazing stars over here too. And then maybe even... Maybe even, um, where is my, oh, there's the rattlesnake. Oh, they've got the little, like, poisonous, venomous sign. Uh, let's see, where is my, well, we could put some ants over here, just for the heck of it. Honeybees, this is who I wanted over here. A nice pollinator to hang out. Hey, where's my honeybees? There's my honeybees. Honeybees for the wolves. Ah, oh, they're so cute, look at them. Oh my goodness, here comes a little bunny. What are you headed over here for, buddy? Are you just trying to escape? Oh, and everybody's starting to eat. Okay. Every, are you just trying to escape the wolves? All right. We'll put down some more of these guys. And there's a little mice on there. I swear, every time I see the mice moving now, all I can think is like, it's a mouse army. Because wherever they go, they just eat everything. All right. We'll get more of the blue grass down. We'll see how much we can get done in both of our wolf areas today. Oh, there goes the first antelope. Oh. <gasps> It's been killed. Oh my goodness. It's a dead antelope. Are you just gonna leave it there? You're not gonna finish the rest of your kill? That's a big kill. Is it just gonna like rot here? Hey, come back here. Eat your food. So is it, oh, there it goes. I wonder like, the mule deer seems a little bit alarmed now. I wonder if we're gonna lose this population. So we'll see if we can get them well fed enough. Let's see, so proghorn antelope, and then the mule deer. Maybe if I add another population of antelope, it looks like the mule deer are like, nope, gonna stay on this side of the river. I don't wanna die, so they're staying over here. So maybe if I add in another population of antelope, let's try putting in another population of antelope over here, and we'll see. Maybe even one more. How far is the wolf's like territory marker go? So let's see, whoops. Uh, let's see, wolf. That's a mushroom. <laughs> I was like, wow, their territory marker isn't that big. Here we go. So I'm wondering if we put like prog horns way over here, if it might provide just enough overlap that they'll also be able to survive. Hmm, so let's go ahead and put them over here. Then we need some buffalo grass. A group of mushrooms has a low population. Hang in there, little mushrooms. Everybody's eating you. And we need some earthworms to clean up all of the poop. So let's see, there's a whole bunch of antelope over here now. Milk vetch, we'll put some of those down. And some more over here. But I'm hoping maybe if the, the antelope herd kind of is on the edge of wolf territory, it might make it so that they're able to reproduce. Oh gosh, there goes our... <laughs> Our mushrooms! Our mushrooms are doomed! I need to put in some earthworms because we need, we still need to have some sort of food. All right, we'll put this over here and then I should probably put some switchgrass over here in just a second too so that it can start spreading. Now I'm quite concerned because we have a lot of grazers but not a lot of grass just yet. So I really need the grass to be good and spread. Oh, is the mushroom population popping back up? Who knows? We'll have to see. All right, how's everybody doing? Everybody doing okay? I hope everybody's doing okay. Oh gosh, there's a lot of deer mice. Now it's gonna really not be the greatest. Oh gosh. It's gonna be really not good if the deer, oh hi little mushroom. If the deer mice don't end up being eaten at all by the wolves, but we just created more competition for all of our other grazers who need to survive off of the plants. So we'll have to see how it goes. And we might need to add in like snakes to balance out the fact that we have other grazers now. All right, and let's put some more switchgrass. I need to put some switchgrass over here. Go, Albot, go! So that these antelope can hopefully not die off, please. Stay alive, little ones. Stay alive and let this grass spread all over the place, please. So hopefully we'll be able to keep these guys alive. 
This is fun though, because we have our biomes where we just get to keep it going for years and years and years. And that's really cool. And then we have these experimental biomes where we can just kind of like try out different experiments of like, okay, what does this population ratio do? Okay, what about this one? So let's see, how, let's see, group of mushrooms have low health. Whoops. So group of mushrooms have low health. And that's okay, because sometimes it'll happen. Yep, they're gone. Or, nope. I think they're okay. Yeah, look, they do they do come back if you leave the mushrooms alone for a little while. So maybe if I put more mushrooms in. Oh gosh, there goes another deer. I don't think the deer populations are going to make it, you guys. And are the bunnies going to breed in time? Okay, we're down to seven bunnies here. We're down to seven bunnies here. We're down to five bunnies there. I think we need more bunnies. I can't believe this. I think jackrabbits, though might end up being like one of the the heroes of keeping our wolves alive because it seems like the wolves will eat plenty of jackrabbits so we're just gonna have to focus on like putting down lots of jackrabbits and putting down lots of grass and everything for them to eat to keep the rabbits alive so new discovery rabbits are pretty important in the maintenance of our wolves in this biome and i can't believe how they just Oh, they took out they took out so many of the big guys already. Oh gosh. Those ribs are really, really sharp and pointy looking, by the way. Alright. Are you happy? You look pretty happy. I mean look at you. You're just rolling in piles of dead rabbit. Are you off to eat more rabbit? I mean, it's almost like they're offering themselves up to you. Please eat a mouse. I I I'm kind of concerned the mouse was a terrible idea now. But that is so much part of the fun of all of this, is just like throwing things down, stepping back and checking on them, like in a few weeks, their time, and seeing how everything did. So, all right, I think that's about all we can stick in here right now. And it's good to know that our wolves are doing okay. Um, not so good for our jackrabbits. So we're gonna have to see if the jackrabbits can just hang in there long enough to have a bunch of babies and keep that population going. And we'll have to see if the antelope aren't able to survive in the middle of wolf territory, if they can survive on the edge of wolf territory long enough to get a stable population up and going. So we'll have to see. It's all for these predators right now. That's what it's for. All right, so let's go check in. And we're going to actually... Let's go ahead and set this to be three months. <laughs> we're going to be hardcore. We're going to take this seriously. We're going to go back to the main menu and let's go check on Wolf Mountains now. So I think I forgot to set this one to be more than a week as well. Uh, so don't forget that if you start a new biome because it might make your plans sort of go a lot slower than you wanted. And here we go. Wow, they're beautiful. They're really, really beautiful, aren't they? I love the Himalayas biome. Why is it just so gorgeous? It's just so gorgeous. I mean, look at them. And these wolves definitely look different than the wolves that we were just with. So they say the same gray wolf, but they definitely look super different. So we're just going to follow these wolves around for a little bit. I want to see what they're going to go eat. Oh, and then while we're over here, we can't forget to start throwing things down. Almost doesn't even matter what it is, like poppies, joint furs, Himalaya fairy grass, whatever it takes. I just can't waste the energy we have and the time it takes the energy to regenerate. Maybe I should get some more, we can get some more like little uh, pika put in. Not sure, marmots maybe. Marmots I think would be kind of like, are marmots going to be kind of like the jackrabbit of this territory? So let's put down some marmots. Let's make sure the marmots are eating right. The marmots enjoy all sorts of soft plants, grasses and fruits. Wonderful, so maybe some like pomegranates? Let's see if I can get a pomegranate tossed in here. Ooh, or the Himalayan honeysuckles. Those are very popular in our other biome. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Hungry wolf. Hungry wolf on the move. That's what it's all about. There goes that marmot. Well, that was over pretty quickly. Sorry, little marmot. Oh, and then we have like a very full wolf taking a nap. So yeah, I'm sorry, little guy. Oh gosh, it was a brief little life. It was a brief life. Wow, they're so pretty. Aren't they just so beautiful? All right, where's this guy going? I think they like marmots, you guys. Maybe. This wolf's running off somewhere. Is it for this marmot? No, I love the way the marmots sleep. Isn't it just the best? Oh my gosh, they're little fingers. All right, so maybe marmots. We'll have to remember that. Might wanna work on a marmot population. 
And let's go ahead and put in some pomegranates here and there. Because they'll provide fruit for all of our populations later. I think that deer is about to go. <gasps> it's gone! That was quick! Oh, that, that guy was really hungry. Alright, so let's check on the actual numbers that we've got to work with as well. And so let's see. Territory markers. Marmots are down to five already. Oh my gosh, the musk deer are down to three. And they don't even reproduce. Yeah, musk deer, I think they start with four. But they don't reproduce except once a year. So that could cause a lot of trouble. So I'm finding if we want to keep our wolves alive, we really need to kind of turn our eyes maybe towards the marmots. What is their... Let's put some marmots down over here. And let's look at their reproductive cycle. So when are they going to reproduce? They only reproduce once a year too. Who are we going to rely on? Who will we who will we rely on when it comes to like feeding everybody? Oh my gosh, I'm not sure. That's what fun this is. That's like that's what fun these biomes are right now. Is just creating experiments and then seeing if our experiments survive or not. Dun dun dun. Dun dun. dun. All right, group of pikas has a low population, which means that they're being eaten. Yeah, they only have two left. What? And these guys reproduce like nobody's business. Okay, let's put lots of goji berries down as well. So I guess we just need to put down a whole bunch of the little pikas. So let me grab them. All right, so it looks like marmots and pikas. And pikas actually reproduce really quickly. But they would provide food for the wolves, so maybe I just need to put down like multiple populations all over the place. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try with something smaller because it seems like the wolves will eat the small things as well as the big things. I don't know if it really has much of a difference. Like if the value for eating a tiny little rodent is going to be the same on the hunger fulfillment levels as the value for eating a deer. If so, it's kind of a little bit zigzagged based off of real life. But we'll have to see. In fact, maybe we can figure that out if we come over to where we have like prime tiny rodent population area and we keep an eye out. Maybe we can see if there's a difference in the hunger levels between the wolves. So we'll do that. And let's put some pollinators around too before I forget. All right. Is that a hungry wolf? 95% hungry. Did you just eat a tiny thing? That looks like a medium-sized potential thing. Could be- could have been a tiny thing. Could have been a medium-sized thing. Alright, and these wolves, man, they have very, very big- very big territories. Oh, uh, here we go! Okay, so dead musk deer, and this wolf is now 100% full. So, ate the musk deer, 100% full. If it eats the little rodent, does it also reach 100% fullness? Because then it might just become a case of like reaching max max um, pika population and then not having to worry about our wolves, which would be a little bit silly. But then we would have the answer to how to keep the wolves alive at least. They would just eat nothing but rodents. All right, let's put these down and then we can put some rodents over here too. Maybe some more honeysuckles. And then maybe some of the cedar trees in a minute, because I do like those cedar trees. Yeah, alright, there we go. But yeah, if that's the case, then actually this experiment may be a little broken. So we'll keep an eye on it. If nothing else, I would love to go and check on our other little areas, our other biomes, and see how they're faring. To see if our little Himalayas biome is still looking as beautiful as usual. <gasps> and we might even add elephants into the Himalayas biome in the future. That would be so cool. Alright, yeah, these guys are doing okay. I'm a little worried because they eat so much. So I'm going to put down a few of these guys over here. Breed, my little ones! Breed and keep my wolves alive! Alright, so that's kind of where we're at on Wolf Mountain, you guys. The Wolf Prairie, I think it'll be okay. Wolf Mountain, I think it'll be okay. But interestingly enough, when you're just doing like one focused experiment like this, it doesn't quite engage me the way when we're trying to bring an entire ecosystem to life and figuring out how to snip in like this species and that species next to each other and if we're going to be able to sustain them. So we'll have to see what we can do. And next time we'll have to go and do a quick tour of all of our different biomes. There goes this musk gear. Oh boy, this might be kind of tricky. But we'll have to do a tour of a whole bunch of our different biomes and collect up the Taito coins that they have and just see how everything's been doing. And then I would love to work more on the Himalaya Mountains biome because I honestly have fallen in love with it. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye!